see perspectives on the recent developments in the Middle East, including the proposed Israel, Israel annexation of West yeah. Bank. And mm -hmm. thereafter, we will consider uh, um, our draft minutes. And I would ask all of us in the meeting to mute our mics. Our mics must stay on mute. And we will only unmute our mics when we are uh, we are speaking. Uh, please, uh, honorable members and ladies and gentlemen uh, in the meeting. Otherwise, our meeting will be disturbed. And the more we say, no, don't do this, do that, uh, the time uh, will be moving. Uh, we want to finish our meeting on time. Can everyone rename uh, they are they are they are gadgets. I see an iPhone here. Uh, I suspect it is Utada who advocate Bumdwan. Uh, is it him? Who is iPhone here? Is there a person who is iPhone here? If that person isn't identifying him or herself, then I will remove him from the meeting. Ubano iPhone. Who is iPhone? I want your name. I don't want hands as Papa Twayo. I want the name. Unmute your mic and then tell us who you are so that if you are unable to rename your gadget, we do it for you. Honorable Chair, it is Honorable Hendricks here. Uh, my name is supposed to be on, but I know I have an iPhone, so... Your name is on. Your oh, name good. is on, Honorable Hendricks, yes. There is okay. another iPhone which is here, and the person okay. is Thank not you, uh, renaming. Your, your name, you are clear. We, we can see you. Thank but you. there's an iPhone here. I don't know who that person is, and I'm removing the person now. Because once that person is removed, those are as boom ban. We're not going to have people listening about the meeting in. Yes. Um, so uh, that's the agenda of the meeting, uh, uh, honorable members. And then after we have uh, adopted uh, the committee uh, minutes, uh, we will close the meeting. And we are hoping uh, to finish um, our meeting on time. We don't expect to have a meeting that will drag uh, beyond uh, the time we set for uh, this particular meeting. Um, honorable members, um, let me welcome you back as well from the short recess. Uh, the Middle East region continues to have civil wars hotspots, uh, including the long-standing conflict between Palestine and Israel. There are many players in the conflicts in this area and South Africa also plays its role in the region in line with its foreign policy parameters. Honorable members, I must hasten to point out that uh, the briefing by the department today is an information session. It is not intended to, or for the formulation of any positions. Uh, on the contrary, the committee as an oversight body should be given insights by the department on foreign policy perspectives on the conflicts in the Middle East, including a perspective on the viability of a two-state theory in light of the intended uh, Israel annexation of the West Bank. In this information session, uh, honorable members, the committee is to assess how the department is managing the country's foreign policy in the Middle East, in particular, the Israel-Palestine long-standing conflict. The committee would further uh, like to get a sense on what diplomatic activities are intended 
to allow South Africa to project uh, its peace uh, building efforts in the region because it is also important. In, 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 in the very near future, uh, honorable members, uh, has, 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 has requested uh, that um, we are going to host practitioners from the states of Israel and Palestine in the form of the ambassadors of those countries to address the committee on their country's viewpoint on the two stages theory in the Israel-Palestine conflict with the intended annexation by Israel uh, of the West Bank. We will remember that. We also intend to invite the civil society to make input uh, in this discourse because it's important to get uh, opinions for other from other people. All these engagements, honorable members, will assist the committee in the future to engage and make recommendations uh, to the executive on South Africa's role in the Middle East, and in particular with regards to the two-stage theory and its implementation. So uh, that's the purpose of this particular meeting and the briefing by the department today, which I, I think all of us would agree that it is important to have. Uh, so um, in those few words, uh, honorable members, you are welcomed uh, to our meeting, minister and, and, and her team. Uh, also, we welcome you uh, to our portfolio committee meeting. Uh, is there any apologies, Lubabalo? Uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, we have two apologies, Chair. Uh, the first one from Deputy Minister Ma Shekhozamini, and the second one from Honorable Mawela. They are both affected by the load shedding, Chair. Okay, Comrade Desmond. Okay, um, can we move for the adoption of the agenda? I move chair the adoption of the agenda. Can we get a second now? A second chair. You must equally raise your hands. Né? That thing of raising hands is very easy here on Zoom. I know you are too familiar with Zoom. There are no issues of uh, that other arrangement today. So I'm going to also complain. So um, I will allow the minister uh, to make an input and then hand over to uh, the person that is going to present uh, on behalf of the department uh, when she's done uh, 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 the input. I see the DG is here as well. Honorable Minister. Chairperson. Honorable Mishwe. May I ask, please, your indulgence and ask a question before the minister comes with my apologies, please? Hi, Bo. Uh -uh. We just adopted an agenda now. No, it's just a question okay. or a request. A request. Let, let me be democratic as usual. Uh, let me allow you, Honorable Mr. Thank you. So, Chairperson, I greatly appreciate the input and the briefing that we'll be getting from the minister and the department. I'm requesting that we also have an input and a briefing about Mozambique because we are told that ISIS is coming closer to our borders so that if we need to take precautionary measures, we'll be able to do so timely, please. Honorable Mishwe, the presentation today is specifically about the developments in the Middle East. Remember, in our uh, last meeting, we had agreed that the department should give us um, also a presentation on Mozambique that we have agreed in principle. So it won't be today that the department is briefing us on Mozambique. We can rather uh, schedule for the next meeting uh, to you. have a presentation on Mozambique because remember it is on our program in any event because we had agreed as a portfolio committee that it's important that we get uh, such a briefing from the department. Thank you. 
surely will be pleased uh, to come and brief the portfolio committee on Mozambique. Remember, are we are we are we are we clear, uh, Honourable Mr. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate your indulgence. Yeah, it is on the program. The Mozambique is on the program. <clears throat> Over Thank to you, Minister. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and good evening, Chairperson and all the honorable members. Uh, we're very uh, pleased to have the opportunity to come and make a presentation and a briefing <clears throat> as has been requested by the committee. Uh, the DG and team will lead the presentation. Essentially what uh, we've attempted to do, Chair, is provide a brief overview of current developments uh, in the Middle East, but with a particular reference to the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict and not other areas uh, in which a range of matters are developing. Then in the second part, uh, the team will present an overview of our foreign policy uh, stance toward uh, uh, the region. As uh, the honorable members and yourself, Chairperson, would be aware, we have a historical commitment to support for the struggle for mm. human rights of the people of Palestine. And this uh, support exists alongside South Africa's belief in the UN resolutions relevant to this cause, but most particularly, we believe the outcome must be a two-state solution with two sovereign states existing in peace and security side by side. There has been no deviation from that objective. It stands as the policy of our country and our government but it is that ambition sorely tested by the events and briefing that uh, the department will put before the committee. So chairperson, with your permission, uh, I think uh, the uh, team can be invited to take us through the presentation and perhaps there would be a brief uh, discussion following that. Thank you very much, chairperson. Thank you so much, Minister. Yes, there will be a brief discussion. Hey, DG, over to you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Minister, and Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity by the committee to request us to sometimes present these uh, geographical based uh, presentations. And it is in this context that we deemed it necessary to afford the, the, those who are at the cold face of those regions. And in this case, Ambassador Zanele Makina is the, is the responsible for the desk, and she's ready to present to the uh, esteemed committee. May I be allowed to give her the floor to uh, present to the committee? Thank you. Yes, you may, DG. Ambassador Makina. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Minister, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, members of Parliament, once again, I would just want to welcome the opportunity for us to be presenting before you our brief overview and the uh, positions of South Africa in the midst of what is going on in the Middle East. As the Minister has, has already uh, surmised the, 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 our position in so far as the Middle East peace process, the Palestinian issue. Uh, my overview will not really indulge on that because I think the minister has so ably dealt with that. Safe to say that indeed the, 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 the world at large uh, is still seized with the issues of the Middle East peace process and uh, seized with trying to find a solution uh, despite also the concerning developments led by the U.S. government in terms of how they have come up with what they call the deal of the nation, sorry, of the century, which in a way diverts us from what we understood would have been a, the, 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 the logical uh, route towards the peace process in the Middle East. 
having said that, uh, on 17th May 2020, is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu presented his unity government before parliament and putting an end to more than a year of political paralysis. However, he put this with a renewed pledge to annex large parts of the occupied West Bank. And this was scheduled to have taken place on the 1st of, of July. Israel's plan to annex, of course, was linked to this US-led peace plan that was presented on the 28th of January this year also, with the intention of continuing the permanent colonization of Palestinian land and in breach of the UN Charter and all other relevant provisions of the international law, and in flagrant violation of the UN Security Council resolutions, including the Resolution 234 of, 2014, oh, sorry, of 2016. This peace plan, which really uh, shocked everybody, the, rather the whole world, recognizes Jerusalem as, as Israel's eternal and undivided capital. It also gives Israel absolute security control over the occupied Palestinian territories and the Palestinian capital in only East Jerusalem's northern and eastern areas. For the Palestinians, they want a two-state solution on the basis of the pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as the capital of their future state, unbroken, East Jerusalem without being broken into pieces. But with the, the, the peace plan of the, of the century, as it was so-called, violates what was understood as pre-1967 borders. Now, since taking office in 2016, Sorry, President Trump's Ambassador. Ambassador? Yes. Yes, you, Honorable yes. Member. Can you please share your presentation? Remember, I said you must share the presentation from your side. Yeah, I, uh, I have. I think they, the PPT will be on on soon. This was an introduction, but we, we we might as well just go straight to the PPT if that that uh, would please you, uh, honourable member. We want the presentation on the screen. Okay, I don't know the the member of the department who is supposed to be putting it up. Uh, let me let, let me communicate with him. I'm sorry about this because he is standing by, and I saw he was on. I just spoke to him now. It's been loaded now. It's loaded now. Okay, except that I can't see it. All right. Does everybody see it? No. Oh, I don't see it either. Oh, he's, he's sending me a message that a chair has disabled the screen sharing. Did I? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Apparently. Is it fine now? On my side, I'm not seeing anything. The screen is dark on my side. <laughs> the person who's supposed to share, what's happening there? Uh, Chair? He is, I think, he's, he, I can hear him speak now. Sorry, Chair. Um, the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Currently, we are seeing your screen share, but I can't share my screen. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I get a, a mess, error message when I try to share screen. Is that all? Okay. Can you send your document to Lubabalo? Jonathan, are you there? Yes, I do have the presentation, Chair. Hmm? I do have the presentation, Chairperson. Can you share the presentation, please? I'll try from my side, Chair. Yes. Can 
Can you continue meanwhile, Ambassador, whilst they are still trying to share the screen or the presentation? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I enable I was, any uh, participants to share the, the screen. I don't know why they can't share the screen. Yes, Chair, I can just uh, do this uh, because it would have been really a, 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 a narrative and then later we would be looking at the PPT itself. Okay. Uh, let me just organize myself a little bit, Minister, uh, uh, Chairperson, to be sure that I'm doing the right thing. It's it's on screen now, on the screen presentation. Now. Oh, fair. Perfect. Yeah. Maybe we can yeah. just go straight to the to the PPT in the interest of time. But your summary was helpful. Why do you want to jump? Okay, in? let me do the summary first because really it makes an overview, which is good because it's two parts. It's the summary and then the, the overview. As I was still saying, Chairperson, uh, <clears throat> really, since the, the, the President Trump took office in 2016, uh, the, 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 admi the USA administration under him has significantly altered longstanding US policies towards the state of Palestine which has led to a further deadlock for the Middle East peace process. From moving the US embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, I'm sure the members are aware of that, and also recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, which again, this is also disturbing the peace because the Golan Heights affect this, this Syrian, um, Syria, Syria's uh, territory. Withholding funds from the United Nations agency that provides health, education, housing, and other services to millions of Palestinian refugees. And then the closure of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO offices in Washington, DC. And the tacit approval for the accelerated expansion of illegal Israeli settlements have further exacted threatening impediments uh, to the foundations of the peace that we're all hoping for. The precarious prospect of Israel continuing with its unilateral intentions to annex large parts of the occupied West Bank and, jo and, and Jordan Valley have, has been delayed. And the determining factor of the delay was actually the inability to reach an agreement within the United States government about the scope of the annexation, while divisions within the Israeli government itself, in addition to the international condemnation from the region and beyond, has also played a part. On the 21st of July, 2020, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Mr. Nikolai Mladenov, briefed the Security Council with stating that Palestinians and Israelis are grappling with a very complex and potentially destabilizing three-pronged crisis. The first crisis right now in the two areas is an escalating health crisis as both struggle to contain the rapid spike of COVID-19 cases. A spiraling economic crisis as businesses close, unemployment soars, and protests increase, and the economy suffers the financial impact on months of lockdown and restrictions. Lastly, there's a mounting political confrontation driven by the threat of Israel annexation of, of parts of the occupied West Bank and the steps taken in response to the Palestinian leadership. I may also want to add that also, as if that is not enough, we are seeing now, I think it must be the fifth day or, or eighth day of the bombarding of, 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 the, of, of Gaza and, and Hamas territories by the, by, by the Israeli forces as we speak. These developments have prompted then Mr. Maldonov to call on the members of the Middle East Quartet, that is the Arab countries, the Israeli and Palestinian leadership to urgently re-engage and restart their diplomacy. What is our position? As our minister has already uh, said, it is our position has no has said that no country should back to, should back any unilateral actions. As such, Palestine remains a priority in South Africa's current international diplomacy, and mm -hmm. South Africa will continue our role in support of the Middle East peace process, informed by the following principles. The first principle for South Africa is the inalienable right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and independence, which entails a principled position against the military occupation of the Pal Palestinian people and their mm. land. Secondly, a belief that there can be no military solution to the conflict 
And that peaceful negotiations in this is the only means of ensuring lasting peace, prosperity, security, and stability. Thirdly, we as a member of the, U of the, of the UN Security Council, it will also, we will also continue to engage that the Security Council discharge its man it should discharge its mandate and do its part to prevent such a dangerous move and promote the early resumption of the Palestinian-Israeli peace talks in accordance with the, U with the relevant UN resolutions, the Land for Peace Principle and the Arab Peace Initiative. South Africa will continue to use all multi multilateral platforms, regional bodies and platforms, as well as its bi bilateral relations to continue to call for support for the basic human rights of, for the Palestinian people. We've also repeatedly stated on previous occasions that the government of South Africa will continue to campaign for the independence of Palestine under the two-state solution based on the international recognition and independence of the viable state of Palestine based on the 4th June 1967 borders, with Israel as its capital, existing peacefully as independent states. We hold that the, the outstanding final status issues must be resolved through direct negotiations between the parties with support from the international community. I will move on, uh, Chairperson, with your permission to Syria. In summary yes. for Syria, the conflict, the, uh, is that okay, Chairperson? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. The conflict in Syria has been raging since 2011, with thousands of people who have died and injured and displaced. What has compounded this conflict again, prolonged, and no doubt prolonged it, has been the interference of outside role players, including mm -hmm. foreign powers and armed groups. A peaceful, stable country became a battlefield for geopolitical rivalry and ambitions of terrorist groups. And as the conflict heads towards its final stages, the Syrian parties themselves, as well as all international role players, must commit to a peaceful settlement based on the commitments made, including the roadmap agreed, up, agreed upon in Security Council Resolution 2254 of 2015. Our position again, insofar as uh, Syria is concerned, Chairperson, we call on all the parties to work together a permanent ceasefire that will pave way for an enabling environment in which an inclusive Syria-led dialogue can take place, aimed at achieving a lasting political solution reflective of the will of the Syrian people. The continued efforts of the UNSC, that is the Security Council, in finding a lasting solution to end the conflict in Syria, despite the restrictions and challenges caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic must be supported. That is our position. We also encourage, we are encouraged, of course, by about reports indicating that the government and opposition sectors of the, Constitu of the Constitutional Committee have agreed to, to reconvene in August 2020 at the earliest, should the COVID-19 travel restrictions be, be lifted. The convening of the Constitutional Committee is the start of a vital political process in Syria, which is necessary to build trust and confidence amongst the parties committed to this process. South Africa reiterates that the political and humanitarian threats in Syria are interlinked, and therefore we call on all stakeholders to promote progress in both tracks to ensure a sustainable and peaceful settlement of the conflict, as we have seen by our own experience in South Africa. The only path to sustainable peace is through dialogue, negotiation, and reconciliation. And this position is always well uh, communicated to all the, 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 the parties concerned, particularly to our Syrian uh, counterparts in the form of, of, of diplomatic uh, conversations that we have. We also have uh, Yemen, which has also been beset by violence and chaos since 2014, when the whole the re uh, rebels alle allegedly supported by Iran overran much of the country, including Sana'a, the capital. The crisis escalated in 2015, when a Saudi-led military coalition launched a devastating air campaign aimed at rolling back Houthi territorial gains. It is believed that thousands of Yemenis are since believed to have been killed in the conflict, while another 14 million are at, risk, are at a serious risk of starvation. 
On 28 July 2020, the Under Secretary General of the United Nations briefed the Security Council and stated that the dire humanitarian situation continues to be compounded by an increase in clashes at the front lines. 33 in January and 46 in July 2020. An extremely weak economy, underfunded humanitarian agencies, the continued spread of COVID-19, and the possibility of a new famine. The UNSC again met on the 15th of July to specifically discuss the safer oil tanker, which has been stranded off the coast of Yemen since 2015 and is now posing an environmental risk of an oil spill. The council urged the Houthis to agree to allow the UN inspectors to board the ship in order to determine the full extent of the damage in order to prevent an oil spill. Insofar as Yemen is concerned, Chairperson and members, South Africa believes that the only solution again to the conflict on Yemen will be an inclusive Yemeni-led, Yemeni-owned political settlement that provides a strong economic and political future for all Yemenis. South Africa also believes that it is crucial for the parties to be constantly reminded of their obligations under the international humanitarian and human rights law and focus on the priority areas of protection of civilians. Humanitarian access, aid funding, strengthening of the Yemeni economy, and progress towards peace. South Africa has also urged the parties towards renewed confidence building measures, including, uh, sorry, confidence building measures, including the urgent resolution of the safer oil tanker matter. As uh, Chairperson, you know, we are dealing with the, almost the whole, you can mention all the countries of the, almost all the countries of the Middle East some crisis of, uh, of sorts is there. Insofar as Iran also, which is quite uh, topical in geopolitical issues around the world, is that President Donald, Donald Trump announced on the 8th of May 2018 that he is, they are withdrawing from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which we call the JCPOA with Iran. And this placed the future of the nuclear agreement in jeopardy. You will remember that the JCPOA was an agreement uh, that was brokered during the, the time of President Obama, which the Western countries, uh, uh, the, 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 the Western leaders had agreed upon together with, um, with Iran. And however, at the advent of, of the arrival of President Trump, he decided to pull out of the JCPOA and immediately came up with, uh, with sanctions against Iran, which meant that Iran, it was be becoming very difficult also to trade with Iran and to do anything. And Iran was put in a situation on, on a back footing and the peace pro and the JCPOA was, was really rendered useless. Now, this dangerous approach has already led to significant political developments in Iran itself, with hardliners putting pressure on President Rouhani to adopt more extreme measures. Iran has also become more aggressive in pursuit of a stronger regional role, putting it in conflict with Saudi Arabia, which has similar leadership aspirations in the region. The country's supreme leader has recently announced Iran's intention to establish a military base in the Indian Ocean by March 2020. Not only was this announcement met with fierce criticism from regional powers, but such a move would be contrary to the Indian Ocean Rim Association, that is IORA, the goal of, 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 of whose goal of, of the demilitarization of the Indian Ocean would be affected. Globally, President Trump is reinforcing the policy of maximum pressure against Iran with overtures in the United Nations Security Council of an extension of arms embargo against Iran. Should this fail, the US is also looking at triggering snapback sanctions. I must uh, say, uh, Chairperson, this, this uh, overview was prepared before the latest development in which uh, the Security Council decided not to extend the, 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 arms, uh, the arms embargo towards Iran. And that has frustrated the, U the US. I think yesterday they have threatened also that they are going to go back to the snapback sanctions against Iran. We will see what is going to happen in this, in this regard. 
And then the advent of COVID-19 has severely impacted Iran, being one of the worst affected countries in the Middle East. The U.S. withdrawal from JCPOA and the subsequent introduction of unilateral and secondary sanctions against the Iran have had a dire effect on the country's response to the coronavirus. Hence, we see uh, in numbers that are just escalating every day of the virus and the economy that has really fallen belly up because of the situation. Uh, Whilst humanitarian sanctions with Iran are allowed under the sanctions, I'm sorry, humanitarian transactions under the sanctions regime imposed on the country, access to aid has been very difficult, mostly as a result of the effect that the sanctions have on Iran's ability to pay for even non-sanctioned humanitarian goods. According to the figures provided by Bloomberg recently, some pharmaceutical imports from the European Union decreased by 15% from 2016 whilst 88% decrease of pharmaceutical products from the United States over the same period was witnessed in 2019. South Africa's position in so far as, as Iran is concerned, we consider the JCPOA as one of the most important and non-proliferation agreements ever, ever, that has ever agree, been agreed. And has repeat, we have also repeatedly requested the US to reconsider its, draw, its withdrawal from the agreement. In addition, we do not recognize the unilateral and secondary sanctions against Iran. We continue to call on all parties to the JCPOA and members of the UNSC to uphold and implement the resolution 2231 of 2015, through which the JCPOA was established. South Africa also supports the continuation of efforts to resolve tensions between all actors in the region and promote dialogue rather than antagonism in order to safeguard gains already made in terms of disarmament and non-proliferation, which are essential for the maintenance of broader international peace and security. Chairperson, we also have the issue of the blockade against Qatar. When the quartet, the, the countries that, uh, the, quartet, the Arab quartet, the countries that we call Arab quartet decided to block Qatar, to, 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 to stage a blockade against uh, Qatar as a country, land, sea, and air blockade. These countries were Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Egypt, which are actually the members of the Arab uh, Quartet. The blockading countries claimed that Qatar was, fuel, was fueling terrorism in the region, and they were too close to Iran in terms of relations. Qatar rejected this claim and stated that there was no justification to, for them to show a force to, 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 for such a show of force by these countries and that this decision was a violation of their sovereignty. Up until now, the blockade is still on in a, 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 against Qatar and the, Qatar has now made a also a, has decided to appeal also to the, to ICAO, that is the, the the Civil Aviation Authority, the UN body created by the above mentioned convention for assistance. In June 2018, ICAO ruled against the blockading countries, but they insisted that only the International Court of Justice had the authority to rule on the matter. However, in July of 2020, the International Court of Justice ruled that ICAO does, does indeed have the authority to deal with the matter and supported the organization's finding on the matter. Both Qatar and blockading countries have intensified their diplomatic, diplomatic maneuvers to garner support from members of ICAO for their respective positions. It is clear that Qatar's resilience was underestimated by the blockading countries, and the question remains whether the blockade is still sustainable. And also, when one observes, in fact, according also to to the utterances of the of the Qatari authorities, they see they say that whilst the blockade was unfortunate on their side, but they have seen also the the bright side of the blockade because they see themselves that they have been resilient and they decided to find ways of self sustainable of self sustainability and to find a alternative ways of, of of navigating the world and also getting goods that they were not able to that, that they were dependent on only on, on their neighboring countries again our position is that we have 
excellent relations both with the state of Qatar as well as the blockading countries. And therefore, it has, we have remained impartial throughout this conflict, urging both, both sides rather to rather engage in discussion to resolve the matter and giving its and to give its full support to the GCC. That is, we are giving our full support to the GCC countries and the Arab League, seeking to mediate a peaceful resolution. As South Africa, we have also informed both sides that it was we are ready to play a constructive role in the dialogue aimed at peaceful resolution of the situation, given the value we attach to our relations with the two countries and the countries in the region. On the issue of uh, chairperson, I'm I'm not sure if I'm still there. Hello, we are listening. For you, um, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> you know this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the situation <laughs> of uh, load trading and everything. It yeah. makes us to not to be sure whether we're on or not. Okay, I'm now on <laughs> Lebanon. I'm trying to rush through. You were saying, Chairperson? I'm saying, okay, continue. We are listening. Okay. Thank you, Chen. On, on, on the 10th of August 2020, President Hassan Diab of Lebanon just last week and his cabinet resigned in the wake of the tragic and devastated explosions that occurred on the 4th of August 2020 in Beirut. The detonation of more than 2,000 tons of ammonium nitrate killed over 200 people injured 6,000 and destroyed swaths of infrastructure, compounding, compounding months of political and economic meltdown. It's estimated that losses of about $15 billion from the, from the explosion have been experienced by Lebanon. This is a bill that Lebanon would never be, a, be able to pay after already defaulting on sovereign debt exceeding 150% of economic output and with talks that have been stalled on of a lifeline from the International Monetary Fund. You will remember, Chairperson, that the, the, cri the, the economic crisis had seen a demonstration that is last year because of the economic situation in, 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 in Lebanon. So the situation, again, of, of this uh, explosion has, has put Lebanon in a very difficult state, and government has just decided to, 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 to resign. Our position there is that President Ramaphosa has conveyed to the people of the government and the, and the government of, of, of Lebanon first condolences to families of the victims for the tragic loss of lives following the explosion of the Beirut in Beirut in fourth, on, on the 4th of August. As such, South Africa reaches out to Lebanon already reeling from its worst economic crisis as well as the coronavirus pandemic. Despite Lebanon's political and economic crisis, the ever-present threat of attack by Israel, South Africa supports Lebanon's sovereignty and, and territorial integrity. In these challenging times in Lebanon and the wider region, further escalation of tensions must be avoided. In this mm -hmm. regard, South Africa calls on the parties to honor their commitments and obligations in line with the relevant Security Council resolutions and international law to resolve the outstanding matters, including the delineation of borders and contention along the blue line in terms of the resolution 1701 of 2006. Regarding the mandate of the United Nations interim, for, in interim force in Lebanon, South Africa believes that given the developments in the past few months, especially pertaining to the tension along the blue line, the role of the UNIFIL in Lebanon is more important than ever. We note the vital liaison and coordination role of the UNIFIL that has continued to play, uh, th th that UNIFIL has continued to play to be able to diffuse situations that might otherwise have escal escalated into hostile and hostilities between the two countries, uh, sorry, between the two parties. Given the increased tension along the blue line and in relations between Israel and Lebanon, the recent breach in the cessation of hostilities together with Lebanon's precarious security situation, as well as the current regional dynamics, South Africa believes that UNIFIL's mandate should be renewed for a further 12 months and its capacity and resources remain at its current levels, as requested by the government of Lebanon. Any change to the mandate would be premature given recent events as yet, 
and as yet unknown impact of the capabilities of the UNIFIL in the coming uh, session. South Africa stands in solidarity with and supports the people of the government of uh, and the government of Lebanon during these devastating and challenging times. The economic situation generally in the Middle East, uh, Chairperson, in most of the countries in the region, were in the midst of broad development plans that targeted the diversification of economies. Whilst the, the region was trying really hard to, 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 to diversify its economies because also of the situation of the uncertainty of the oil economy, COVID-19 has, has placed everything almost on hold. The development plans would have presented an opportunity for trade in investment growth between South Africa and especially the countries from the Gulf region. We as South Africa had really, we have been gearing ourselves uh, to, to participate in term, economically in the diversification because we have seen all the Gulf countries beginning to see that depending on oil only was not the solution. And then they were looking at many other opportunities agricultural and otherwise, in order to, to, to boost their economies. And South Africa was gearing itself to be part of, of, of the new openings and the new industries and sectors that were developing. However, the diversification now has required increased spending by states to stimulate the new industries and attract labor. The capital for this investment would likely have been made through the vast foreign reserves that they have. However, the slump in, this, in, the, in the oil prices has put huge financial pressure on the economies that are heavily dependent on oil revenues in the region. Now, the virtual disappearance of liquidity from the budgets of the oil exporting countries due to the low price and lack of demand led to the significant budgetary pressure with negative economic growth in the GDP to be expected. The economic impact of, low oil, of the low oil price and the drop in demand coupled with the drop of economic activity in the services sector is going to impact certain sectors of the economy with negative growth forecast for the rest of 2020. The most likely solution to alleviate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic will be, will be to utilize their sovereign wealth fund, funds in these countries. And fortunately, they have quite uh, big funds, so, so to say. The, the world funds that are also also um, invested around uh, around the world. A rise in bonds issued is predicted as well as a quantitative easing, measuring, uh, me easing measures to make it cheaper to borrow money and to create higher returns on current investment portfolios in the sovereign wealth funds. And the use of such funds for servicing the debt. This may imply reduced investment potential at a state level. In such an environment, the value of missions to monitor, the, the value of our own missions now to monitor and track economic recovery in their respective countries of accreditation cannot be underestimated. And we are urging our missions. We've spoken to them. We had a conference uh, on Monday with our heads of missions to, to, to also give them an urge to, to, to be on, on the alert for the new opportunities that will be coming so that South Africa can also be have part in uh, in gaining access to that. For many other industries, the situation will become extremely difficult, but there are a number of strategies manufacturers could employ to mitigate some of the worst effects. These may include a greater push towards e-commerce and to harness technology, technology to strengthen supply chains. The stimulus, in, in, in so far as our position is concerned, the stimulus provided by the capital injection presents a real opportunity to increase trade with the region. As the Gulf's traditional supplier economies are unproductive and the demand will be stimulated by continued social welfare supplies by the United, by the state. The ability to identify export opportunities and service them will require increased in, uh, interaction between missions and private sector in South Africa, coordinated and facilitated by DERCO and the, and the DTIC. The international supply chain and market disruption, the slowdown in economic activity will likely have an impact on the production and profitability of specific global companies, particularly in manufacturing and raw materials, materials that are used in manufacturing. There is a move to diversify international supply chains, which provides further opportunities for South Africa's manufacturing industrialization. 
South Africa should continue to pursue primary sector production and export to the region as it remains in demand and would present an opportunity as global production have been curtailed and price competition may result in exploitation of South Africa's comparative advantages, which is production costs and market proximity. Although the immediate concern of government on both sides for now is to contain the ongoing pandemic, the time is ripe for us to start serious discussions and cooperation on the multifaceted aspects of the healthcare and medical sciences. This could include joint collaboration in the production of medicines, funding of research projects, exchange of research papers on various diseases and illnesses, and regular exchange of professionals between institutes and laboratories and also sharing and exchanges uh, of, of best practices. The final and the most important approach must be the role of the missions in the Middle East in monitoring the development and implementation of COVID-19 COVID strategies in their countries of accreditation in an uncertain, in an uncertain environment. Policy decision-making is likely to be reactive and fluid, whereby on the ground analysis and reporting from the missions would be for more impactful decision making on South Africa's own economic recovery and integration in, COP in, uh, in the global economy. This then, if our missions will really follow, which we, we, we believe they will, follow the matching orders that they have received from, from headquarters and from our minister, this will reinforce South Africa's economic transformation and bolster its strategic interests. Chairperson, this was, this was my overview, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. We can have now, we can look at the PPT to, to, as the second part of the, of the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for the presentation. Uh, honorable Members, uh, I see no hands uh, here. I'm going to allow you to uh, raise hands so that we engage um, with the presentation as presented by the ambassador to us. I see Honorable Nkosi's uh, hand is up. Uh, can you raise your hand so that I know to you, Honorable Bergman, Be? Uh, let me note all these hands. Um, is there no other hand? Honorable Ngozi, can you speak? Uh, meanwhile, I'm writing down other hands. Good evening, Chair, and good evening to the Minister and the Deputy Ministers and uh, the leadership and management level of the department. Chair, I think we, I, I welcome the comprehensive input on the Middle East. It is a, a, a complicated presentation um, and I think engaging with it would be difficult if we do not focus on specifics. I am um, delighted chair that the on the presentation the in particular the slides uh, 19 and 20 which outline what our responses are in, 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 in the light of the economic developments of the entire Middle East. I think that that is important and um, encourages, uh, it is encouraging that the department has actually made an analysis that enables it to make strategic economic and trade interventions that will enable us as a country to take advantage of the opportunities that arise in that region. Be that is, as, it, as it may, Chair, um, I would like just to ask what the impact of the conflicts or unresolved conflicts in the Middle East is on uh, the Sahel 
and the Maghreb region in, in, in Northern Africa. I'm asking this question because often the, the link between the two is obscured by a focus on each without looking at the interrelation of the spilling over of the conflict, particularly uh, in the Middle East uh, as it affects the, the African continent. Secondly, the, what is the role of the African Union as a body um, in interacting with the situation in the Middle East and what are the priorities that the AU has tabled or has identified as important, uh, both at a diplomatic level, but also at, at trade and investment level for the entire region, uh, um, uh, for the entire continent, but in particular for the uh, region in, 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 in the north. And related to that, what is the role of the regional bodies tasked with the responsibility to ensure safety, stability, and security, in particular of the borders and the harbors uh, bordering um, the Middle East? What are their inputs? What are their role? What, what, what is it that they, they uh, bring to the table in, in the process of re resolving this issue? The last issue, Chair, is the, the issue of Palestine. Um, I, I'm encouraged that the department uh, is, is adhering to the principled position that has been taken by the country in line with what our policy is, that one, we recognize the inalienable right of the people of Palestine to their own sovereignty and self-determination. This cannot be denied to anybody. Uh, it has not been denied uh, uh, by, in fact, it's something that has informed uh, nations or the creation of nation states uh, from centuries in Europe uh, uh, and, and, and the Americas and in our continent. It's something that we, we, we cannot flinch in supporting the people of Palestine in that regard. There is the, the problematic role played by the United States of America. While we engage with them diplomatically, it is clear that responding to internal pressure, particularly after 2016 and the rise of the right wing in the United States itself, the Trump administration has adopted an approach which I characterize one as very aggressive. It's an aggressive foreign policy approach, firstly. Secondly, it's, it's in, in the mercantilist approach, they disregard multilateral institutions. They disregard existing agreements uh, that have been in place that have created a balance uh, in the international situation to avoid war. And they are playing in the Middle East is not only uh, to deny the people of Palestine um, uh, their right to sovereignty, <coughs> but it also fuels, their actions also fuels the, the tensions that have always been there uh, in, in the Middle East. And I think it, it, is, it will be incorrect for us not to call out the United States government, particularly represented by the pre present government led by Donald Trump, as, in my own words, as a, a, a precursor of an, or, or playing in the, on the verges of aggression or, or encouraging aggression. And as far as Israel is concerned, Chair, I think we, we, we must, and I've said this before, that Israel is a belligerent occupier of Palestinian lands. And under international humanitarian law, Israel has particular responsibilities that towards the people of Palestine but also towards respecting the territory, the land, 
the international heritages, I mean, the national heritage and cultural artifacts of the people of, of, of Palestine. And therefore, <clears throat> in whatever fora we participate, we must remind the world that the humanitarian law responsibilities of Israel are much more important uh, as they continue to, to, to exact their occupation of Palestinian uh, lands, let alone their breach of international law and continuous breach uh, eternally so of United uh, Nations resolutions. And let's encourage the department and the president in particular through the AU to push for a two-state solution through a negotiated peace process in the Middle East. Any other approach is going to plunge this region into a disaster. And let me conclude, Chair, by saying that there, there is a growing or there is a view that the two-state solution is uh, appropriate for, it, for, for resolution of the Palestine-Israel issue. But there, is, there are people that are beginning to say we must also look at the possibility of creating one Palestinian state that encompasses both Arabs, I mean, Palestinian Arabs and the Jews living under one border with a recognized sovereignty with one government. And this, this body of thinking uh, is gaining ground. Uh, if, you, if you look at people like uh, Naom Chomsky and progressive Palestinian and, and Israeli scholars on uh, conflict and international law. Thank you, Chair. That was too long, Honorable Nkosi. Too long. Oh, sorry. What's happening? Mm. Honorable Hendrix. Honorable Hendrix. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I would like to applaud the Department of International Relations on its policy and position with regard to uh, countries, especially in the Middle East and especially in Palestine. And um, I just want to um, touch on one of the issues raised by the director about the need for uh, assistance with regard to the effects of the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, uh, especially uh, medical supplies. And earlier today, we heard a, a, a presentation by the Minister of International Relations, Honorable Aledu Pando, about the African medical supply platform, uh, which our president uh, is leading as chairman of the Bureau of the Assembly of the African Union. I heard the director referring uh, to, the, to, to the fact that South Africa can play uh, a role to ease uh, the needs and the burdens uh, in the Middle uh, East with regard to supplies. And I would like to suggest that maybe uh, the department must look at the African medical supplies platform and not, uh, not only help from South Africa, South Africa at the moment, uh, Honorable Chair, as you know, there are a lot of disputes about the PPE and so on. And that's why a, 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 a excellent uh, platform would be the African uh, Medical Supplies Platform to show support from Africa uh, to help the uh, Middle East with its uh, 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 matters relating to the COVID uh, pandemic. And just in closing, uh, Honorable Chair, um, it is a um, the South African position on, on especially Palestine uh, is well received by many countries. And as I was very proud to be a South African when uh, in December I attended a conference in Ankara and a conference in Iran addressed by the presidents of uh, both countries at different times. 
And I once again want to applaud the Department of International Relations for its real humanitarian approach uh, to the matters in the Middle East. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Henrik. Uh, Honorable Ngola. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Honorable Ngozi. Uh, just just two, two few issues that uh, I would wish to add from what Honorable Ngozi has raised. Uh, the one of which would be how far have you engaged the United uh, Nations Security Council to cancel for this matter relating to Palestine and Israel. Uh, it has been going uh, for it is going on for quite some time now, and the South African government has taken a stand uh, with regard to what is happening in both Palestine and Israel. So how far have we? engaged there with the UN Security Council with regard to that in ensuring that um, we bring stability there. And uh, the second one would, uh, would uh, be on the, on the team that was established to mitigate the issue of Libya. Uh, the last time we engaged with regard to the matter, there was a team that was established to mitigate uh, on issues of instability in Libya. Uh, except those two issues, Chair, part of Ngozi has covered a lot of issues. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Honorable Ngola. Honorable Bachman. Chair, sure, thanks very much. Um, last time I thought that Honorable Ngozi and I were in full agreement. This time I can tell you that we actually not. Um, I, I must just say that I, I think that if we look at the geography and we look at the history, I'm not sure that we got the same education and, uh, and um, I must be glad for that. If you look at an atlas and you look at Israel and you look at the area that is um, a portion to Gaza, Palestine and Israel, it only makes up a pin drop of what the whole of the Middle East is. And, and the way that uh, Honorable Nkosi talks, you would think that Israel is the aggressor of the whole of the Middle East, but it's actually... It's not, it's not even a pin drop compared to all the other territories that make up what is the Middle East. So we, we, we must put that into perspective. It's got nothing to do with what I say that. I'm not talking about the oppression of the Palestinian people. I'm just saying in terms of the actual Middle East. So what I, wanted, what I do want to draw your attention to, and I think it's important because when we talk about the Middle East, I think it's important that we take out emotion as in politicians, and we employ logic. And the first logic we have to look at is figures. And the figures don't lie. So when you look at something like the UN report, uh, which is based on independent facts drawn up by the UN in what's called the UNDP report, the UNDP report looks at the, 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 the livelihoods of people, the quality of life of people, in sovereign countries or the quality of life in, in territories of people. So to take a person's life, it would look at their quality of life in terms of education, the quality of their life in terms of their housing, their sewerage, their electricity, uh, the quality of their water. And then it would take their uh, life expectancy. Israel is quite advanced and the quality of life is high and the age expectancy is very high. It's, I think it's something like 74 years old. But the interesting thing is South Africa falls 10 years lower than Israel. But what I want to tell you is that Palestine is higher than South Africa. So what we need to ask ourselves is, should we be worried more about ourselves internally? <laughs> you know, the Palestinians should be worried about us in South Africa because we have a worse quality of life based on the UN report. You just have to take the UNDP report. Now, again, when we talk about the, you know, often the favorite is to say, oh, there's an apartheid. And I'm sure Honorable Hendricks will say, it, you know, that this is definitely an apartheid. What's happening in the Middle East, separate to what happened in South Africa, South Africa wanted a marriage. 
it was it was always on the cards that what South Africa needed for South Africa to prosper was a marriage. What the Middle East needs, or the Middle East area of Israel and Palestine and the Palestine territories, is a divorce. And this is where it gets quite, you know, this is where the this is where the issues get quite heated, is that there's really only three issues that people disagree on. And it's uh, Gaza, the Palestinian Authority, and Israel. And I think people also don't understand that there's Arab people that live in Israel. Arab people own land in Israel. Arab people are judges in, uh, in Israel. Arab people are members of parliament in Israel. Yes. They enjoy equal status in Israel. Now, in those three areas, it's land, it's refugee status, and it's Jerusalem the rights of the refugees. These are the three areas of, 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 of conflict that, that, that is the major source of, of conflict. But what people don't, and Ambassador, you've left this out in your presentation, what happened to the rights, what happened to the refugee question from all the other surrounding areas for the refugee, you know, and then, and then of course, Councilman Corsi said the same about America. America wasn't the problem in the Palestinian mandate. The Palestinian mandate they, they enjoyed peace between the Israeli, between the Hebrews and the Arab people. There was peace. There was they, they were brothers. It was the British mandate that caused the problem because there was a miscommunication. The one side wrote a letter to say that they were going to get the land, and another side wrote a letter to the other side and said they were going to get the land. And the, then the British got on a boat and said, "Well, you two sort it out," and then they left. So. The rightful people that should sort it out, in the right, in my opinion, is actually the British. But the actual, the the rightful um, negotiators, the peaceful negotiators, the people that probably have the most credibility is actually Egypt. Now, I was quite heartened to see, and I, you know, I'm sorry that it's who the, the negotiators are, but when when the when the United Arab Emirates comes into a peace plan, and there's already Egypt and there's already Jordan, and Lebanon and Israel have enjoyed peace for a long time, you do get heartened. You do believe that there could be a lot more countries creating peace. Because I think the peace, the solution for peace, and we must have peace, I, I, I definitely empathize with the fact that the Palestinian people deserve a land of their own, and they deserve sovereign independence. But I also believe that Israel deserves security. So what we saw in 2006 with the withdrawal of Gaza, with the withdrawal of uh, uh, Israelis from the settlements, was as soon as the Israeli soldiers came and took uh, Israeli people off the settlements and gave Gaza back Gaza, Gaza started firing rockets um, onto Israel, which was uh, contrary to the agreement. So now what people were saying was, how do we, how do we ensure peace? Now, what we are, do agree on, I don't agree on everything on the Trump agreements at all. I agree with a lot of what South Africa says in terms of where we're, where we're you know, where is consultation. But I do believe that the key to peace comes in trade, is that we need bilateral trade. If we can start, if we can start trade between the Palestinian authorities and Israel, and we can get a relationship going between the Palestinians and Israel and peaceful relationships, this is where the key to peace can come. And if we can start sporting relationships, if we can, and, and what really needed is for us to actually go to the region to understand how small this region is that we talk about. Israel is smaller than the Kruger National Park. And if we can actually go there and see what it is that we're actually talking about, we would understand that this area that we speak of, when we talk about it, what, and, and Minister Fandor, I was gonna ask this today, we look at the UN votes. Now we've spoken about the rest of we've spoken about the rest of the Middle East, but what did we vote in the UN for Syria? We abstained from the vote. There's human rights atrocities happening to our people in Syria, but we abstained from the vote. There's human rights atrocities happening to people in the Ukraine, alleged, but we abstained from the vote. And the ambassador says, but we care for the people. We care that we look for the we we, we care that we we. We care that the resolutions protect the people, but why did we abstain from the votes when the votes came to the UN Human Rights Council? So these are the things that we have to ask ourselves is 
the biggest word that we have to understand in when it comes to our, our international relations and cooperation is consistency. We've got to be consistent in our approach. So, Chair, why I bring up this again is that I really still believe that we have to go out when COVID is finished or when COVID is under control in some form or another. I really challenge us to go and see for ourselves. I challenge us to go to all the all the all the territories where there's conflict to actually put ourselves in those areas and to see for ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Bechman. You are loyal to what you are loyal to. You can see with a straight face. <laughs> Honorable Mkane. <laughs> Honorable Mkane. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Let's deal with uh, Bergman a bit later. Because honestly, um, the people of Palestine are dying. The people of Palestine are being displaced. And here comes a member that should be protecting the people. He speaks of a trade between someone that he himself says you must divorce. They want a divorce, but he's forcing us to make a trade with Israel and Palestine. But let me deal with that one last, Chairperson. I wanted to check from the ambassador with regards to, uh, does the UN have any alternate body that they get data from with regards to conflicts and fatalities and uh, changes in territories um, where there's instability apart from the US armed conflict location and events um, projects, because I see that they are the ones that are, are mostly involved in conflicts everywhere in the globe, but we also rely on data that they produce. And then the instability of Yemen, um, how does it benefit or disadvantage the world's oil shipment, as we all know that uh, the Gulf of Aden is where most of these oil ships uh, travel uh, to get to uh, different destinations. And then uh, how effective has the Unifil been uh, since we all know it's now uh, 42 years since its establishment for us to request that uh, it, its role be renewed since it expired in August uh, 2019. And then um, in Beirut, as the South African consulate, have we had any South Africans that needed assistance or do we have people that are currently there in dire need of, of help? And then Chairperson, with regards to uh, Israel and Palestine, I think the South African government must remain adamant and must remain to its core that we, we will not uh, side with Israel. We will not um, hide or beat about the bush on how the Israelites are, t are, are treating the people of Palestine. As uh, Honorable Bachman is saying that uh, Palestine and Israel want a divorce. Grant them the divorce without the exercise of showing who has power, because we all know the power of Israel is because of their uh, big brother, who is uh, Donald Trump and who is the United States of America. I don't know, Ambassador, if you can assist us to tell us, should uh, uh, Sleepy Joe win the elections in November, how will it uh, change the dynamics to what Trump has done, especially now with this peace deal that Trump has signed with the, the UAE and Israel, which it, it's, it's, it's hiding, uh, it, it's making the Palestinian people believe that, uh, the annexation will not happen. Whereas we all know that the annexation has been halted so that uh, whoever wants to trade can open up their gates, believing that Israel is, is um, 
is pulling away from its original uh, agreement of the oppression of the people of Palestine. Uh, Honorable Bergman, we understand that uh, your political party might be getting funding from the Israelites, but uh, let us not turn a blind eye on what is happening to the people of Palestine. It's pure oppression, it's pure apartheid, and it will not assist for us as South Africa to try to, 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 to mediate by bringing in a trade agreement between Israel and Palestine. You know, the history that you've just told us that uh, their lifespan is better than um, us in South Africa. The current situation or the current statistics say that people are suffering. The people of Palestine are, are bleeding. They can't breathe because of Israel. And we all know why, because they have a big brother who is USA. And even the U UN humanitarian bodies are afraid of the USA because they don't want to isolate the, U the USA. They don't want to isolate um, Israel like they did with small uh, countries like South Africa. They, it was very easy for them to isolate them, to blockade them from trading with any other countries. But because Trump, I mean, Trump recently withdrew funding from WHO in the middle of, pan, of a pandemic, pandemic. But the UN seems very quiet on such issues. They don't want to say anything. So the people of Palestine are depending on the rest of the world for assistance against the big brother, which is USA and Israel. So, Chairperson, um, I want to tell Mr. Bergman that Honorable, <laughs> Honorable Bergman, honestly, honestly, um, would rather find you funding from elsewhere as, as <laughs> in, instead of Israel, because these people are really oppressing the people of Palestine. And it, it's, it's sick. It's really sick, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Honorable Mulder. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chairperson, my apology. I had another meeting at the same time. I could not hear the uh, Honorable Ambassador, but I did do what I needed to do. I worked through her presentation before the meeting. And I just want to make one or two points with regard to the Israel question. The first one is the fact that if you look at the South African government's policy with regard to the Israel question, it is quite clear that South Africa is committed to a negotiated peaceful settlement. That, that's quite clear throughout the presentation that South Africa supports that concept, that we need to find a solution through negotiations. Now, my first problem is that if you look at the South African's policy position, we will not be able to play any significant role because we are being perceived in terms of our policy position to be biased. And we and I can we can go into that detail um, in terms of being pro-Palestine and not being neutral in the our whole approach in this process. If we want to get the negotiations going, then the downgrade of the embassy clearly also has played a role um, in, in, in putting our position in that regard. And you have to take cognizance of the fact that, as far as I'm concerned, that the Middle East is changing and that South Africa is being left behind. This new agreement signed between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, both our BRIC partners, China and India, welcomed that uh, agreement signed. That agreement put the whole annexation thing on hold. And there's a process now which reopens negotiations and the normalization of uh, relations between Israel and other, other Arab states. So I would suggest that South Africa should play a role to get the parties to negotiate and get back to the negotiating table, but we cannot do that if we are perceived to be biased in the process. And I would like to hear what the ambassador says about that. Thank you very much. Honorable Swart, Thomas, Um, good evening, Chair. Um, 
Good evening to the honorable minister and um, officials from the department. Um, Chair, uh, I think that uh, honorable Bergman, uh, by saying to us that he's happy that he got education from somewhere else and referring to us to the Atlas it is really something else for a person who's been in a democratic South Africa for so many years to actually really appreciate his education better than the education of uh, other members and especially uh, Honorable Nkosi Afe had spoken that uh, our Atlas is on the wrong side. Surely uh, we have people who are defending a uh, horrible doings uh, around other parts of the world uh, in this committee, we actually becoming afraid, Chair. Chair Mine, I've got a comment to the department and a question. Um, from the briefing, it becomes clear that the um, cause for the state of Palestine requires that the department should use its um, diplomatic skills to ensure that South Africa plays its role of solidarity with the government and peoples of Palestine. It is therefore imperative that proactive and practical steps need to be taken to give effect to South Africa's contribution to the Palestinian cause. Um, can the department share with us, the committee, what some of the practical steps are that the department can take in this regard? Thank you, Chair. Honorable Ngora, I see your hand you, 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 is, is not lowered. What's happening? Uh, Chair, I think uh, it is important for us to unequivocally say in this uh, portfolio committee meeting that uh, <clears throat> the imperial forces around the world are hitting hard and they are vicious. And part of what keeps them reigning in their own ways is that they have got their sub subjects in every country they live or they want to capture. Hence, you are able now to get uh, the remarks of uh, uh, just like what uh, Or Beckman is saying. It tells you that they have spread their wings across the world and they are going to hit harder. The more we become lenient to the imperial forces, the more they are going to hit harder into the innocent souls of civilians across the world. I think it is important uh, to note that uh, part of what had made us defeat and take the apartheid regime into its knees was basically mobilizing what we called the international solidarity. I think as things stand now, uh, in the country, we need to be part of the solidarity that is giving out and helping other countries. And we need to be able to isolate some kind of uh, the behaviors like uh, Beckman in the country because we can't find ourselves having spoken about what we call the national question, which is simple, mm -hmm. the right to self-determination uh, and be able to be on the other side of, it's in the constitution of the country chair, that South Africa has a right to self-determination. Now, we can't speak another language when it comes to other countries uh, in the world. So I think uh, it is important for us to register in this portfolio committee that uh, the department itself must ensure that we are able to mobilize all the progressive forces in the world to ensure that we have got a clear plan of ensuring that civilians in Palestine, Lebanon, and other countries are not affected by the heinous acts of uh, the US and its subjects, <coughs> like Ekman and others. Thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to register that. Can you lower your hand? Honorable Minister. Uh, hey, sorry. Do you want to start before uh, the, 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 the department responds? Sure. Yes. Sorry, if I may, can I just respond before Honorable Nkola talks for me and says <laughs> lies about what I've said? I'm not going to allow dialogue. We'll wait for the second round after the response. He spoke to us. Why can't I speak to us? 
because I'm chairing the meeting and I'm not co-chairing, I'm saying after the department has responded, because this back and forth of you, honorable members, will chow the time for the department. So it's only the ANC that can speak to us. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't intend to respond to it. So you allowed him to speak to us, but I can't speak to us. Minister, are you going to respond before the ambassador responds? Uh, I hope so, uh, Chairperson. Okay, please, Minister, the floor is yours. Two-state Thank solution. You. Thank you very much, Two Chairperson. Two-state solution. Um, I think, Chairperson, you were very right at the beginning of the meeting when you indicated that uh, you will be inviting the ambassadors uh, of uh, Palestine as well as of Israel to brief the committee. One of the questions you would probably put to the Palestinian ambassador is do Palestinians enjoy the freedoms that Mr. Bergman has referred to here and is their human development index of the character that he mentioned in terms of the freedoms and rights that we enjoy as South Africans in a democratic South Africa? Do they have freedom of movement? Do they enjoy human rights? Are they bombarded on a daily basis? Do they have a territorial integrity? Are they a sovereign state? So the ambassador would be able <clears throat> to provide the daily experience uh, of uh, Palestinian people and to give the committee uh, a full sense of what the lived experience of Palestinians is. Uh, so I don't think uh, it would be my duty to uh, present uh, that overview. And uh, we certainly believe that uh, having a presentation of that kind uh, would be of great assistance from those who live uh, the, the reality. Um, Chair, let me come to the question. Uh, I think that uh, the Honorable Nkosi was right, that we are dealing with complex uh, issues. And I think the answers aren't easy. They, they certainly are very, very challenging. And of course, um, the Middle East briefing that we made uh, was not only focused on Israel and Palestine, it was on the entire uh, Middle East, particularly uh, uh, the Gulf and beyond uh, region. And you're dealing with much more, but the critical question, which will in the end lead to peace in that region is the resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian statehood matter. If that matter is not resolved, there will not be peace in the region, throughout the region, because much of the conflict centers around this situation. It is one that the world has to work hard at resolving if we are to achieve peace. But in our struggle for freedom, of course, it was just as little, you know, little unfree little people. Uh, we sought friends throughout the world, among whom were the Palestinian people, who supported our cause and who led to the situation we enjoy today, where we enjoy freedoms that those friends do not have. So we cannot just give up. Uh, on seeking to assist in finding a resolution uh, uh, to, to that problem. And perhaps to answer uh, the Honorable Mulder, we've made it very clear that we cannot just continue business as usual, pretending that our presence in Israel is making a difference. What we have said is the moment there is a movement that in indicates a positive intent for negotiation, toward a settlement, we will absolutely open arms, get the embassy going and so on. So it is not that we don't wish to have uh, uh, engagement and we continue to do so by the way, because we do have an embassy there. We just do not have an ambassador, we have a Shajay who is engaged uh, in the country. So I think, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, uh, give an impression uh, that uh, the South African government has given up on the two-state solution. We have not. And we will continue to be involved advocating for peaceful negotiations 
advocating for security, for freedom, for sovereignty, for the people of Palestine. We will not support the Bantustan option of the peace plan of Trump, nor will we support the temporary relaxation of the annexation plan, which has been directly stated by Premier Netanyahu as being but a temporary. It's not a final negotiated end by the UAE and Israel to annexation. The very next day of the announcement of their agreement, Premier Netanyahu indicated this is temporary, it remains part of my plan to annex, as I have announced previously. So there isn't a genuine intent uh, to seek to achieve peace, and we shouldn't gloss uh, over the problem and, and pretend by a strange reference uh, to, to South Africans, uh, I assume black South Africans, I'm not sure uh, who the ones who wanted to be married and divorced are, uh, I thought we all wanted uh, what we have today in South Africa. So I'm a little surprised. Um, with respect to the Sahel region, I think the impact on the Sahel region has been uh, greater in terms of, uh, you know, fueling conflict by the uh, through the situation in Libya uh, and the many external forces which uh, are proxy players of a range uh, of in terms of uh, you know fueling conflict by the uh, through the situation in Libya uh, and the many external forces which uh, are proxy players of a range uh, of conflicts utilizing Libyan soil and it's been the proliferation of arms in that region and militant groups that has led to the movement of arms into the Sahel and fueled various insurgent groupings to be engaged in conflict with governments uh, in that region. And we can see some of the impact in the events of the last uh, 48 hours uh, in uh, the Arab League and other bodies. We do have every two years an Arab-Africa summit where we discuss issues of commonality, but most particularly around economy uh, and trade matters, far less on political uh, matters, but there is a, a consistent uh, interaction. And of course, the UN Security Council uh, remains seized uh, with the matters uh, of the Middle East. Um, we receive reports from the special representatives of the Secretary General on a regular basis to the Security Council. Palestine and Israel remain on the agenda. Yemen, Syria, Iran, all are on the agenda of the UN uh, Security uh, Council. On um, Mr. Hendrick's comments, well, thank you very much uh, for those comments. I think that uh, the idea of drawing in other regions to the African uh, portal on medical supplies for COVID-19 is one that we'll certainly uh, discuss uh, with our friends uh, in the region. And we'd also look at how they might benefit from what has been a very good initiative started by President Ramaphosa as chair uh, of the uh, AU. To Honorable Ngola, yes, indeed, uh, the Security Council, as I've said, remains seized with this matter on a regular basis. There are reports, resolutions are looked at. Each of the uh, envoys report to the Security Council and progress uh, is uh, reported upon. The key question is, how might the Security Council play a stronger role in ensuring that there are negotiations that will lead to a successful uh, outcome. That is something uh, that I believe we still need to discuss uh, in the Security Council and really not leave the issue behind, but ensure that there are concrete outcomes which are the objectives and goals of the deliberations uh, that the UNSC has rather than the reporting by envoys or designated uh, UN uh, bodies 
uh, such as the Peace Commission uh, and other structures. Um, with respect to uh, the Honorable um, Sani, certainly we draw on a range of uh, data sources. This would include uh, our being able to uh, engage with a range of uh, NGOs and progressive forces in the Middle East region. We also do draw on uh, UN data. Uh, I must say Israel and Israeli uh, citizens are not just one homogenous negative entity. There are groups that are dedicated to peace um, that work very much to draw the different communities together. We do meet with those peace uh, structures uh, from time to time. So there are a range of uh, bodies that provide uh, information uh, that uh, the department uh, can utilize and draw on. And of course, academics in South Africa working on the Middle East uh, uh, question also produce literature that we use. Uh, we have uh, uh, campaign uh, structures in South Africa that work very closely with different groupings, both in Israel as well as in Palestine. Uh, we will, as South Africa, Hi, remain me. committed to the policy position uh, that I have referred to. Um, I have not uh, had uh, any indication uh, from colleagues that I speak to that they view South Africa as biased. In fact, the uh, information I get and the approaches are that South Africa is believed to be a, an important interlocutor and all would like to see South Africa engaged in the processes of drawing the parties together. And we talk to all parties, but our stance and policy position is very clear. We do not support the breach of United, Security Coun United Nations Security Council resolutions. We are still in the belief that a two-state solution is the objective and that that is the direction that should be pursued. And so uh, we work on that basis with whichever group we engage with. It's a very important uh, policy platform and we should not deviate uh, from it. Um, I think, uh, Honorable Swartz, there are a range of steps. Uh, we are engaged on a consistent basis, as I said, with a range uh, of groupings. But what I believe needs to happen is there has to be a very strong civil society movement that supports the pursuit of peace. I think more and more civil society organizations from all uh, the countries in the region, as well as organizations in South Africa, on the continent and in the broader South, need to draw together to mount a global campaign in support of the cause of the people of Palestine and the people of Israel for peace, security, through a two-state solution where each has its sovereign land and has status that any nation should enjoy. Any solution other than that cannot be promoted by any person. And that remains the standpoint that we as DERCO pursue and advocate in whatever platform we have the opportunity uh, to engage on. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I don't know if uh, Ambassador Makina wants to add, but uh, she's most welcome to do so because they are far more experienced uh, at this than I am, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Ambassador. Honorable Chairperson, I must say that the, the minister has really covered all the, the questions almost that, that were raised. I could just uh, quickly take up the, the, the part that uh, Honorable Mkosi had asked about the, the role of the regional bodies in the, in the situation of the... Of the I, 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 if, if I got you correctly, Honorable Mkosi, it was about the situation of the, the inputs in, in, in the unresolved uh, conflict in the Middle East. And uh, the notable uh, regional bodies that are, that, that are bordering the Middle East 
would be the no notably would be the GCC and probably uh, then the Arab League. And of course, the GCC has been has been uh, weakened by the blockade by the by the position of of, of the quartet to blockade uh, the, the, the 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 state of Qatar. As a result, there has not been any significant interaction of the GCC that would that would that would be inclusive and have a, a, a stance to in terms of how to approach the conflict in the region. But the, uh, the agreement that has been signed between Israel and UAE is a precursor to things that we may, we may that, are, that we are crossing our fingers or rather putting our, also our ears on the ground to see where that will be leading to. Because UAE being part of the CCC and signing a, a, an agreement with Israel, which also insinuates to, to want to also bring in the solution of the Palestine-Israel uh, occupation is also going to be interesting for us. And probably notably to say that in terms of the Arab League, uh, we have seen just recently an announcement by Sudan saying that they are in peace talks with Israel. We do not know whether that agreement between the UAE and, uh, and Israel was not a precursor or rather, yes, I would say a precursor to things to come in terms of the position of the of, of Arab countries or rather the, 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 the regional states. We are really tuned in to see what next is going to come. The, the, the Well, probably the, also, you were asking also about the impact on the Sahel. The minister has covered it very well, but then also again, just to say that uh, the Sudan indication that they are signing with Israel also is beginning to tell us what to make us to, to anticipate anything in so, in so far as whether they are going to move as a pack or whether we still have an opportunity to, to prevail. But in so far as the AU is concerned, the AU is not confused in terms of how it stands uh, in relation to the, to, to, to the conflict in the, in, the, in the region and all the conflicts, in fact, in the region as they, as, as they present themselves so far. Uh, I think the minister really covered everything ably. Uh, <laughs> although she always says that we are more experienced than her, you know, the minister is amazingly very much on top of the issues in, 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 the, in the middle. It's not, uh, not amazing in the sense of being amazed, but quite remarkably and also very much on, 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 on her fingertips in terms of the region is concerned. Uh, Unifil, uh, Honorable Msane, this is the, the, the position of, of the UNSC and South Africa as uh, being the chair presently of UNSC mm. is that Unifil has been, has held uh, at bay many conflicts that could have happened had did not been there. So we support the extension of the of, of, of the UNIFIL to, to, to the extension of the of the tenure of UNIFIL in the in the region. We, we, we are not having major problems with that. You also asked Honorable Sane for us to look in the in, in into the in, in, in the crystal ball as to whether the the, the likely taking over of the Democratic Party uh, in, in the U.S., whether it is going to change the situation or the positions that have already been taken by the, the Trump administration. Well, I can, we can only say in South Africa that we will wait to see. We, do, we don't have a crystal ball to look into that, but it will really be interesting to know because if you were to, to say more to that, really, you, you may err eh, to, 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 over, to, to either underestimate or overestimate the role of, 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 of the Democratic Party in the affairs. The only thing that could indicate to you clearly would be to say uh, what did the, the DA, I'm sorry, the DP, the Democratic Party, what did, what did the Democrats say? What was their position in, with respect to the, to, to the announcement of, of, of the deal of the nation? Then that would give you a clear position as to whether the Democratic Party is going to go le uh, left or right in the in the matter. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. 
Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Ambassador. Uh, this uh, presentation <coughs> that you brought uh, before us today is a very important uh, presentation. You can see uh, by the emotions of certain members uh, of the Portfolio Committee, honorable members are so emotional such that they can't contain their emotions because they want uh, to advance their own political agendas instead of engaging uh, here, uh, because this is a platform to engage the department uh, instead of raising emotions. Honorable Bachman, I don't take kind to sarcasm. I'm not scared of you. So don't do that thing again. That thing that you wrote in that chat, I don't take kind to it. Allow me to chair this meeting. I have no co-chair in a form of yourself. So don't you ever think that I'm scared of you. The platform is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I must just say that uh, that's quite dangerous though if we start allowing members to talk about, to, to misrepresent other people's um, input and then the chair protects them and not the other member because then you are starting something that you're not gonna be able to finish. And that's a horrible trend. So it's not about, uh, I'll take, I don't take kindly to your threats either. Um, I'm going to just say that if you look- Who's that? Desmond, Honorable Noel. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I'm raising an order here. Uh, Honorable Bergman can't uh, say we are raising something probably that is, uh, we are not going to, uh, 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 because his statement is just said now to us. Uh, it's like we are scared of him. He's raising other issues that are not important here. So, Honorable Bergman must behave himself. This is a portfolio committee. We are not in a in a in a, in a rally here. We are in a portfolio committee. Must respect all of us. We are honorable members. Must behave as such as an honorable member, not like somebody like like the, the Holy Spirit here. Thank you, Chair. Honorable, Honorable Bergman. Okay, Chair, let me help you. So Honorable Honorable Nkwala comes here and goes, oh, the Imperial yeah. Forces are coming. Yeah. You are the Imperial me. Forces are here. So the, How are you helping? The Imperial Forces, I'm, I'm not an Imperial Force. So the, the, the rally is the Imperial Force man, which I'm not. My input, and let me help Honorable Nkola, again, my input, which was very clear, I don't know what Honorable Nkola was doing when I gave my input, but he obviously wasn't listening. My input stated, and it's very much the same as the minister's input, and it's very much the same as Berko's input, and it's my party's input as well, it's our, it's our policy, is that we believe in the two-state solution. We have the utmost sympathy for both sides, and we believe in the right to self-determination of both sides. It's very clear. And what I'm saying that the dangerous part of it though, is that Honorable Nkola had two times that he could, he could talk. The second time that he spoke though, he got up and misrepresented everything that I'd said wrong and spoke about an imperial force that exists. Um, of some imperial force that, I, that, that he made up that didn't even come from what, anything that I had said and then was defended because I couldn't retaliate. Now, that kind of, if, if that kind of thing takes place, just now we're going to have that I can say something, I can talk about bananas, and the next thing, he's going to get up next time and say, oh, but Bergman's talking about carrots. And he's, he's talking about the imperial forces of carrots. And then you're going to say, but Bergman, you're not allowed to talk because Honorable Nkola spoke about carrots. So all I'm saying is, please, we must talk the truth here and we mustn't make our own rumors here. We mustn't manufacture rumors and then start saying, you know, this is not how this portfolio must work. So minister, I must tell you that when you talk and you know that I have a high regard for you, um, 
the policy you speak about, this, the right to self-determination is very important. The problem is, is that there's even a, a, a there's even talk of a three-state solution because the problem is what do we do with Gaza? Yeah, am I going to have an opportunity to respond? Is that how the portfolio committee uh, uh, works? Minister, don't worry. Let Bechman Bech hang himself. <laughs> So, so, Minister, the problem is that they even speak about a, a, a three-state solution. And in that three-state solution, they talk about what happens with Gaza and or how to connect Gaza and the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian territories in a way that um, the two governments, Hamas as a government and the Palestinian Authority as a government, the Fatah government, how do we get them to work either as a government together or as a, um, you know, or negotiate, the, you know, negotiate one party together. And I, I was interested in your thoughts on that, please, Minister. Thank you. Honorable Molda. Yes, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson, I'm a bit concerned about um, what's happening in the portfolio committee, with all due respect, um, we all have very strong views on various issues from, from different sides. Um, and we can, with all due respect, behave like primary school children and threaten one another. And you're imperialist and you're a communist. I don't think it's gonna take us anywhere. Uh, I think we've got a deal here with very serious matters and which has got a huge influence internationally and also for South Africa. I've made the point when I started just now, and I said the Middle East is changing, and I'm concerned that South Africa is being left behind. The mm -hmm. Honorable Ambassador uh, Makina just now referred to the negotiations between Israel and Sudan, and we may have a situation rather sooner than later that there's another peace agreement signed with Israel. Egypt welcomed the latest agreement being signed, and it seems to me that the international community, and specifically the Arab world, is getting tired of the fact that negotiations between Israel and if Palestine is not getting off the ground, and from my perspective, I would blame Palestine for what it's worth that those things are not getting uh, going. So I think we have to take recognition and cognition of what is going happening at the moment. And South Africa should play a very safe and neutral role in trying to foster the whole situation. My, my, my concern is that we may be perceived to be uh, not neutral, as I've said in the beginning. I, I'm very happy to hear the Honorable Minister say that South Africa remains committed to, to a two-state solution through negotiations and peaceful negotiations. And the minister mentioned uh, mm. some of the questions that we'll need to have to ask the uh, ambassadors when they come to the portfolio committee. I'm going to ask the Palestinian ambassador whether they recognize Israel as a Jewish state and if they are prepared to accept that as a reality. Thank you, ma'am. Um... Yes, thank you. Honorable, I, Justin, please, can you switch off your phone? Uh, Honorable uh, Swartz. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I just want to raise what Honorable Bergman has written in the chat group that he's asking, is it election time? saying he's not scared of you, what is happening, who is the chairperson in the portfolio committee, and what does he exactly mean when he's asking, is it election time? And equally so, when Honorable Nola responded to him, chat group, he starts saying that uh, he, you, they are scaring him and that he's listening to the minister, but it means he was not listening to the other honorable members when they were speaking, when he was writing that he is not scared of you. And is it election time? Surely, Chair, we must respect each other in, in, in this portfolio committee. And if all of us are going to come to this portfolio committee with our different views and not come here to do the work of the committee and what we are supposed to do, it's going to be very problematic. Because in this committee, there is only one chairperson and it's yourself. And if people want to be chairpersons, they must first go and win elections and not come and ask us, is it election time? They must know what, what it takes to be a chairperson of a portfolio committee before they come and ask us, is it election time? We are not going to be insulted by other honorable members of this committee. 
We are all equal members here, yeah? so we must respect each other. So if people feel that they can write on this chat, then we are going to request that when you host the meeting, you must block the chat group so that we are not insulted by other members and also disrespected. And also disrespect you as the chair. Because once you start saying, I'm not scared of you, you become personal. So sing as Otelela and Alana chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Ngola. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think I wanted to address the issue that has uh, taken part in the in the Zoom chat. Uh, I think uh, Honorable Swart has addressed it, uh, but I think uh, it is important uh, that we respect people's views here. And uh, when we want to accuse people of not listening, we must have well, we must we must have listened as well. Because remember, the first person who spoke on the utterances of Honorable Bechman is Honorable Rusan, not Honorable Ngola, where he, he attended to the to the utterances that he wanted to approve of a deadly and heinous act that is done by Israel into the Palestinian people. So it, it has been throughout an engagement of how he has portrayed and portrayed himself into what has been presented to the portfolio committee by the department. So we, 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 we are not in this portfolio committee because there is anyone that we fear or we are scared of. We are here to have a, 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 a joint program and, a, and an objective engagement on matters of international relations and cooperation. So there must not be no one who comes and behaves as though that is a messiah of this portfolio committee and is not scared of anyone and people are scared of him. We're not scared of Bergman. He must know today when he sleeps, he must know that no one in this portfolio committee is scared of him and his views and his imperial driven views. No one in this portfolio committee is scared of him and we must engage objectively on matters. No one attacked him. Uh, no one took him out of context. We engage around these matters. And it, it seems like the majority of the portfolio committee is taking a direction of the position of South African government of supporting Palestinian people whom are brutalized by the US resourced and funded Israel. So we are not going to behave as though that in this portfolio committee, we don't know what is happening in Israel where we await uh, Ambassador Makina to come and brief us. We're not going to behave as though in this portfolio committee that we don't know what is happening in the world. We're able to make our own researches and we're able to share notes here in this platform of the portfolio committee, not because we are scared of anyone, not because of uh, any other things. So say, I, I only wanted, uh, and um, one of the more guys is, is intimidating me on the other side, Chair. Uh, uh, so th that's 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 the only thing that I wanted to say. Jen. Thank you very much. Are you sitting with Honorable Molda where you are? How is he intimidating you? <laughs> he has just sweet unmuted his uh, video and uh, just um, did some very disturbing uh, gestures on me. Honorable Chairperson, on a point of order. What's the point I've of order? Yes, I've listened to this honorable member that just spoke. He's creating an absolutely false impression. If I move my head from side to side because he's talking what I believe to be nonsense, it's my right to do so. I haven't done anything threatening or anything of a sort. Really, we are not honorable behaving like a portfolio committee should behave. We are wasting each other's time here. Honorable Molda, can you just practice what you pe preach? Because you can't say honorable members are talking nonsense. That is wrong. It can be. So please practice what you preach. Yeah, in that same vein. Can be. Honorable Msani. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I just wanted to touch on the issue of this peace deal with the USA and the UAE and Israel. If the AU can just put out a stance because we all know that this peace deal is out there to cause a dire confusion. 
uh, it's not going to help the Arab countries because currently also you can see there are some people that are starting to piggyback on this so-called uh, peace deal between the Israel, UAE, and 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 the USA. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Honorable Msane. Uh, you know, uh, Minister, today uh, I'm reminded of what uh, Pedro Mandela said uh, years ago on, on, on the issue of Palestine. And he always expressed his views uh, on, on Palestine without fear. Uh, of contradictions or, or favors. Uh, he said that in extending our hands across the miles to the people of Palestine, we do so in the full knowledge that we are part of a humanity that is at one. So when honorable members comes here uh, to this meeting and want to turn a blind eye on what is happening in Palestine, it is so disheartening uh, because it's a clear indication that we lack humanity. That, that's one. And I think we need to take a mirror and, and look at ourselves as, as these uh, legislators and, and, and lawmakers uh, of this country. And you know what? It's a pity that uh, Minister ODG probably and his team has no compass or a map uh, where they are seated. Otherwise, I would ask them to fly to the map and share it uh, so that as South Africans, we see and have a picture of the scholars of geography when they come to this and, and tell us how educated they are and their educations are different from the others uh, because Mona, they've learned the map like this and like that. So that we see and have a picture of what we are discussing here today. It's a pity that uh, the department might not have a, a map, but it is also a clear that if a, a, a small village which is the size of a Kruger National Park, is so powerful such that uh, people of Palestine would suffer a lot under a handful of people. Clearly, there's a third force there. And we can't turn a blind eye that there's a third force, uh, which is right in our backyard, by the way, here in Mozambique. Uh, they, they may enter here and do whatever they want to do. A, 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 a anytime. So people can't want to come to the portfolio committee and, and, and call them honorable members when they want us to turn a blind eye on certain issues, which are issues of, of humanity. The same freedom that uh, we enjoy here in the country is the same freedom which Dato Mandela once said, if we are free here, and Palestinians are not free. That freedom of South Africa is not complete. And that will be carried by generations to come. It's a pity that when Honorable Bachman is advancing his points in the portfolio committee, he's telling us about his party position. So if that's the case, the ruling party is advancing its policies and we are going to uphold those policies as a ruling party and ensure that we implement them. And in this case, as a portfolio committee, we must support the South African government in what they are doing in assisting the people of Palestine. We must not come here and, 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 be, and be emotional about these issues because there is nothing to be emotional about. Uh, by the look of the presentation and what the minister has um, presented to us in response to our questions clearly, our government is in the right direction. So as parliament and as this portfolio committee, we must support what our government is doing. So let us not be emotional about these issues. Minister, is there anything you want to uh, say on, on what the honorable member said in the round two? Well, uh, 
Thank you uh, very much, Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Bergman mentioned something about a three-state solution. Um, I'm not sure where uh, he gets that, but I know that uh, both uh, uh, Fatah uh, and uh, Hamas would not agree uh, to such a position. We are supportive of a two-state solution, which is the reiterated position of most member states of the United Nations, and that is the policy position that is being pursued by the government of South Africa. As to uh, the Honorable Mulder saying he blames Palestine for no progress, well, I, you know, the weak are always uh, uh, being blamed, those without arms, those without territory, those without rights, those who have to hold a dom pass, those who cannot uh, uh, school, who cannot farm, uh, they are often blamed uh, uh, for being victims of those who use their power. Uh, to abuse and to oppress. Uh, we believe in a two-state solution where the Palestinian people enjoy self-determination and independence, and where they have a contiguous territory, which is their sovereign territory, with East Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Palestine. That is the policy position that we hold as the government of South Africa. And uh, it certainly does mean we, we are not neutral. We are not neutral. We support the cause of the people of Palestine. But we believe in a two-state solution because Israel will exist, must exist, and will continue to exist, but not in its current form of oppressing the people of Palestine and denying them their sovereign rights. This is uh, the position. Uh, we we do know, having gone through our own struggle in history, um, that there are powerful forces that are often uh, presenting solutions which they try to color as being progressive, when in fact they wish to continue advancing uh, the oppression. We know this with Margaret Thatcher through use of the Commonwealth and many experiences as the struggle against apartheid was fought. The Bantustan system, uh, Bantustan is being tried through the Trump peace plan. The uh, annexation is very much an apartheid uh, approach. So we are familiar with all these uh, tactics, uh, Chairperson. And as South Africa's government, we will not uh, embrace them ever. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, Ambassador, um, do you have anything to add on? The minister has come. Well, you, you, you had requested the, the map to be up. We were still mounting it. And uh, we mounted it, but we I think we are going to slide to where the map is going to show quick soon. Okay. Uh, it's going up. There we go. The, the the map is on is on the screen now, Minister, uh, Honorable Members and Honorable Chairperson and Minister. I don't know if you can see it. Show us where is Israel, Israel, and where is Palestine. <laughs> if you look at uh, the 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 the, the end of the continent of Africa where you see Egypt. And then there is the Red Sea, there is Sinai, Jordan. Uh, this map did not capture Israel. Jonathan, I'm not sure if you can mount another map that captures Israel particularly. Because just, it, just, Israel yeah, Israel is Israel there. just pointed, yeah, there's a pointer there. Yeah, no, Israel is a pointer there. there. Yes, Israel would then encompass uh, both uh, both uh, Israel and Palestine, basically. I am not sure whether you, that is what you wanted to see, Honorable Chair. No. <coughs> um, you know what? Uh, mm -hmm. 
this map it doesn't show what we we really want what what we want to really see uh, because uh, it, it doesn't show uh, the lands which are taken uh, by the by the Israelis which oh, yes, belong yes. to, to oh, okay uh, because yeah. that is very important because seemingly that is the bone of contention here. Uh, uh, honorable members, they seem uh, not to think that it is wrong to take a territory of another country and because they know the maps uh, better than the other and so on. So I, I want them to see because that map, it doesn't show the territories of, of, of Palestine and the, and the, and the Our, international size of Israel. Yes. Our it's apology, heavy, Honorable, it's said, because we, 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 we took a map that rather covers the Middle East rather than zooming only onto Israel. But the, the yeah. point is taken. I would also just uh, request the Honorable Member also to tell us, because he keeps on saying that South Africa is far from uh, Israel. We should be more concerned about the issues that are happening geographically. I think he, he referred to something as us geographically being remote to the to the issues of uh, that are happening in Israel, rather than con con concentrating on the issues, if I'm not quoting him incorrectly, on, on the issues or, or on the land of South Africa. But as therefore uh, we are following. May the, I respond? You are not going to interject, Honourable Bachman, when people are speaking in this meeting. You are going to raise your hand because you are interjecting, and the the, the ambassador is is responding to our questions. Why are you like this? I was just about to say, because he, he had particularly raised the question and said that I left out the issue of refugees and uh, and, the, and and our remoteness to, to the issues that are in Israel, rather than looking also at what is, is, is our challenges here at home. Uh, I would say, I was just saying that uh, as the minister had said also, we are guided by the our foreign policy, which does not want to look away from also the issues of, of human rights abuses around the world, not only in, in, the, in, in the issue of Israel and Palestine. And of course, Palestine being also one of the, prior, of, of the foreign policy priorities of the ruling party, and which is governing. And therefore, we as servants of the state, we are governed by the government of the ANC. Honorable Bechman. Chair, yeah, thanks. Sorry, I thought the ambassador was asking me the question. That's why I asked you through you if I could respond. The first of all, on the map, um, how it works is in 1917, that area that the ambassador was showing you is the Palestinian mandate. That whole land is called the Palestinian mandate itself. So it's divided into what's called the Transjordan, and then Transjordan goes to the one side and then Israel is on the other side. Land called the Palestinian territories is in Israel and Gaza is a small portion that's just part of Egypt. The point that I was making is that that piece of land is the size of Kruger National Park. I never said anything about no one's allowed it or no, it, people are making a big deal about it. What the point that I was saying is that there's no stability risk. That piece of land is not a stability risk to the whole of the Middle East. It's a small piece of land for the, I kept on saying that I still, Palestine and Israel have their own conflict, but it's not to the detriment of the whole Middle East in terms of size. Ambassador, in terms of the, um, in terms of the actual um, refugee problem, on the refugee issue with regards to Palestine, Palestine talked about Arab, uh, Palest um, Arab Palestinians that were displaced from Israel, that weren't part of Israel. And I'm saying that what South Africa ignored are possibly the um, Israelis that were displaced, both from Palestine and the surrounding territories, but also the, the UN votes where we did, where we we what we spoke about like with Yemen and with Syria, where we abstain from the votes. So um, what you're showing now on the Palestinian loss of land is from the Palestinian mandate, 
we go out to the 1967 borders, um, which is what the DERCO, the DERCO resolution is, which is what the ANC policy is, which is what the DA policy is. Thank you very much, Booth. Um, just on, 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 thank you. I suggest yes. you close the meeting, Chair, because uh, yes. I think we are going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, I think no, Minister. Uh, Minister, uh, I think no, we, really, we really need to close the meeting, not unless Honorable Ngozi, there is fundamental issue that you want to raise. No, Chair, I think let's close the meeting. Yes. We, is there any fundamental issue that you want to raise? We, I'm covered, yes, covered. You are covered, yes. Um, we, we must close the meeting and uh, as the portfolio committee agree that we are going to support our government uh, in, 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 in what they are uh, doing uh, in terms of the interventions uh, in Palestine and two-stage um, um, solution is the way to go. And we are not going to sit and fold our arms when we see an apartheid style of, 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 of governments uh, in other parts uh, of the world are implemented to the friends of our revolution. Uh, so we, we need to be firm uh, on that uh, as this portfolio committee, uh, because we are humans. And if we talk humanity, it will start by ensuring that the lives of the people of Palestine uh, are protected and those people have freedom and all their territory which is taken is going to uh, be regained back uh, to them, whether it's true negotiations uh, or what, whether we feel uh, uh, otherwise uh, or not, uh, we are supporting uh, our government irrespective uh, of how we feel as, as certain individuals here. So that should be the stand uh, of the portfolio committee uh, moving forward uh, on the issues of Palestine. Um, this meeting, uh, Minister, is going to be closed. Uh, we are going to consider uh, our minutes uh, of the meeting as the portfolio committee. And um, uh, Lubabalo, you are going to flight uh, those minutes. We are going to do two sets of minutes uh, today. Uh, adopt those minutes because we've got a pile uh, of minutes of the portfolio committee and we are from recess. So it's important that we deal with the next point on the agenda, which is the adoption uh, of the minutes of the portfolio committee. Uh, that's where we are now. Is that in order, honorable members? Yes, sir, of course. Yes, Chair. Honorable uh, uh, Mr. Squela. We need the whole day. When the ambassadors come, we must have one item on the agenda. This issue of Palestine and Israel. Yeah, and the day just so that Bechman must not get sleepy on the meeting. And, and the department uh, must bring us a proper map, not the one of the bandu stands. We, we want a proper one. Uh, uh, Chair, are you able to have projected the minutes, Chair? Yes, we see the minutes. Uh, honorable members, uh, the minutes of the 26th of February, 2020, presentation and briefing by Derko uh, on South African chair, uh, AU chair, and then the outcomes of uh, the recent AU was, it was recent at the time because it was February now, we, it's no longer recent. And uh, browse page one. There are no issues there. Page two. New page three, 
there, are there any issues uh, on phase three, honorable members? I take it you read the minutes because they were sent to you uh, on time. Are there any issues on page three? Page four? Page four, no, nothing, okay. Page five. Page six. Uh, the spelling of uh, Honorable Mushwe is wrong. Can it be corrected? Uh, on the last page, uh, it's important that it's, it's written correctly. Uh, is there anything on the minutes? Clarities, uh, corrections, editing, nothing. Can we move for the adoption of the minutes with that correction on the spelling of uh, Honorable Mshwe's surname? Honorable Swartz, I see your hand is up. Honorable Swartz. Chair, I move for the adoption of the minutes with the amendment of Mr. Mishra's surname. Thank you. Honorable Muela, can we move for the seconder? We have a seconder. Yes, Honorable Chair, I second that we adopt uh, the minutes as presented with the amendments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, can we have another set of minutes? Um, Lubabalo, Mr. Skwela. Are they visible, Chair? Yes. Uh, the briefing minutes of the 21st of May, briefing by the Department on its strategic plan, 2020-2025, and annual performance plans, 2020-2021. A briefing by the Department on the African Renaissance Fund strategic plan, 2020-2025, and annual performance plans, 2020-2021. Page one. Okay. Yes. On page one. Page one, yes, Honorable Mzan. Can, can you just lower it a little bit? Uh, can the EFF go on top of the FF plus, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a noted. noted. Yeah, please, please, can we be respected? <laughs> is addressing issues of protocol. It's, yes, it's not and, a joke. Mm. If Mulda is a problem, yeah. even both. Just support it, Comrade, comrade Musane. Sane is, well Musane is alive to detail. Yeah, you support it. Yeah, so uh, page, uh, Jesus, page two, Jesus, honorable, <laughs> you now, okay. Now, move uh, first, uh, Mr. Skwela. Content. Yes, introduction, mm, bullet one. Subaleka Gakulu, a honor of Mr. Skwela. Bullet one, phase three, honorable members. Phase three. Mm. You welcome that input by the minister. Zaita, honorable Mr. Mskwela, page four. Page four, honorable members, can you mute your mics? We are all hungry. We hear uh, uh, Richard Zekal. 
Honorable members, can we focus on the minutes? Next page. Page five, honorable members. Page five, honorable members. Page six. Page seven. So these minutes are well captured. Page eight. Can we move for the adoption of the minutes? Honorable Muela. Honorable Chair, I move that we adopt the minutes as presented. Thank you. Can we have a second for that? Honorable Swartz, I see your hand is up. I second the adoption of the ministry. So yeah, the minutes are adopted and that was the last point uh, on, the, on our agenda. Uh, closing remarks, Minister. Is she gone? DM, voters, closing input. Is it gone? Honorable Alvin Voters, are you still here? They are not here. They deserted you, Chair. No, they haven't. Oh, you're still here, Chair. Are you still alive? Okay. So, honorable members, uh, our meeting um, uh, is ending here with honorable Chetty having participated from this from the beginning to the end of the meeting today. Uh, we are happy to have you for the whole duration of the meeting, uh, Honorable Chetty, uh, because we've not been seeing you in these meetings uh, of the Portfolio Committee. We don't know whether you mandashed or you did what for the meeting. Uh, also welcome uh, our Aljama uh, Honorable Member, uh, Honorable Henry, uh, to our Portfolio Committee. And uh, we are going to have uh, the department uh, in our next meeting uh, presenting uh, on Mozambique. Um, we, we all want uh, to hear what's happening uh, with the Mozambique and the situation uh, in our neighboring uh, countries. And without wasting your time, uh, honorable members, uh, we have managed to conclude our, our meeting before uh, 10 o'clock, just seven minutes before uh, 10 o'clock. Um, so our meeting is adjourned. Uh, I see that you are all calm now, hoping in our next meeting there will be no emotions because I don't want to chair emotional meetings, uh, uh, especially when it's adults that are emotional, it becomes very difficult uh, to chair a meeting. So- Yeah, of, of, that man of, must of, not drink what he, drink, what he was drinking today, honorable oh, chair. Muela. Bergman, yeah. you drink not, what? Yeah. 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 Yeah
No, he's not alone, our Batman. Thing, it's Mulder. Our meeting is adjourned. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DG <laughs> and your team, for such an informative uh, presentation, which provoked emotions of the honorable members. Uh, we know that you are coming back with the two ambassadors and the emotions will be very much higher than you saw today as demonstrated by these honorable members. We are hoping uh, by that time, uh, we'll have a bigger space in parliament where we'll have a, a proper meeting, not a virtual one because the country now is opened. Uh, people can come back and our portfolio committee is a committee of less than 50 people. Uh, so observing regulations, uh, certainly we will have uh, such a meeting and such an important presentation from both ambassadors uh, of Israel and Palestine with the department. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, our meeting is adjourned. I don't know why they aren't banned on the leak. We are going to have problems moving forward because the buy in parliament also surely will be opened. It, it will be ready. We're going to have serious problems. So the meeting is adjourned, uh, honorable members. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank yeah. you, Chairperson. Amanda. Where is Bergman? Bergman. Where is Mulder? Yeah, in Bergman. The meeting has been adjourned. What do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah, snap line, Mkai. We are Sutela. Yeah, hey, man. I'm <laughs> sorry. Sure, sure, sure. It's keep on. With All right, in fetch. I'm green. You're born. Yeah, no, no, no. We, <laughs> we must be presentable. But we are sweet. <laughs> we are umvile. <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Go and eat now. Your wives have cooked for you. We want to end the meeting, you people. We want to end the meeting. We want to end the meeting. I'm still in the dark. I'm still, I want to sleep. Me, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to sleep because I'm in the darkness. I can't even see food. Bye bye with the darkness. Eh? Hey. <laughs> but guys, please, man. I need a look to go to. Alvin Bottas, where did he go? He left education. education. Yeah. Mm, guys. Maris mm. Tombe Sakes Connor. But he's not a girl. I get it. That's what you do. You put your Tombe and go shopping. You put your stub and go shopping. That's what you do. Hmm? Good yeah. night, Che. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good night. Good night. I'm ending the meeting. I'm ending the meeting. David, Pume group in why you fed David. Ah, you come at Lala. Oh, you can't band bam. Oh, what? I'm Puma, ma'am. Yeah, you can't come at Lala. Why you come at Lala? I'm so keen to come at Lala, Wena. Oh, bye -bye. <laughs> I'm ending the meeting for all. <laughs>